Alright comic book collectors and comic book readers, I am Will the Comic Beast bringing you yet again another new video. Today we're looking at my new comic book day reviews for the March 8th new comic book day. I think I got 7 books on the list here today. I'm very excited. There were some books in here that I really enjoy and others not so much. So I don't want to waste any more time. If you're watching this for the first time, I thank you for stopping by and enjoy checking out the show. So with that, let's get into this week's episode. So up first on the list is a book that I completely forgot about. It didn't actually come out this week. Um, it came out last month in February, and I was reminded by a viewer of the show um, to check out this issue because I completely forgot about it, like I said. And we're talking about Local Man. I was doing my reviews for, uh, I think it was two weeks ago for the new comic book day reviews, and he suggested that after reading Junkyard Joe, that I should check out Local Man, and I had the intention of getting this issue, but I just completely forgot about it. So I did get it this week. I'm a little late, but at least I'm not too late like I was with Junkyard Joe having to hunt down every single issue. So I got issue number one a little bit late, but now I'm on time for the rest of the series. And overall, I am digging this series. It's pretty cool. I just want to start off by talking about this cool cover that I picked up, you know, foil cover i've always been a fan of the foil covers and then something that's pretty cool about this if you flip it over it's a different cover and you know this reminds me a lot of the the like a lot of the covers from the 90s um you see a lot of covers do that sort of thing where one side will be foil and then the opposite way it will be a different cover and i really found that fascinating they're trying to bring back the 90s feel of this comic book and it's kind of like a 90s nostalgia for some people you know if you were collecting comic books back in the 1990s then you probably really enjoyed this one because it just reminds you a lot of that time and this is a superhero comic book i really enjoyed this one it's got the same writer from uh stray dogs tony fleeces um and it was a solid read you know we see this main character his name is jack he was once a superhero himself and we're still trying to learn about everything that he's done and he comes back to his hometown where everyone seems to only see disappointment when they look at him so we're still trying to figure out why he does that but in this issue we do see a glimpse of his superhero powers that he does have and what he was once like so it was a pretty solid first issue and i'm definitely looking forward to, to the second one and i really enjoyed the art inside this issue i thought it was perfectly drawn and the colors really popped on this i really enjoyed it nothing bad to say so up next on the list we got clear issue number one um this is by scott snyder and francis manipal this is by Dark Horse, and I wasn't—I didn't know that this book was coming out, and I didn't even know what it was until I picked it up this week. So, you know, we got Scott, Scott Snyder writing it, and, you know, we see him do all the stuff on Batman, and we saw him do Nocteros, and this is way different from everything else he's done, um, other than the fact that it is a detective thing, so it probably is a little similar to Batman. Um, but overall, I really dug it. It was a longer read. Um, but I didn't mind it because I really enjoyed this issue. So this is set in the near future. I think it was set in 2052. And it introduces the idea that there are no longer like computers and technology as we know nowadays. And there's this new thing in this world called veils. Um, and it's basically a way of living. You can fully sum submerge yourself into living inside of a veil. And it's like a social media and it just sells even bigger lies, and it can cause problems. And the person right here is actually a detective, has his, some cool helmet that he's wearing, and he, in this issue, we see him take off the helmet. He looks like a pretty cool character. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the next issues here to come. Definitely going to be continuing with this. This issue set up a lot for the series to come forward. Um, the art, you know, set in 2052, you see all the neon lights. The art inside of here really popped. And I really enjoyed this issue number one. So up next on the list, we got Predator issue number one. Um, they did that short little miniseries of Predator quite a while ago. And now they're bringing this back. And I feel like this is an ongoing series. So Predator issue number one brought to you by Ed Brisson and Nitho Diaz. This was a solid read. You know, last the last se series of Predator, it was kind of like a small event. And it was still an all right read. I think I only got like two or three issues of it out of the five. But... This issue, number one, was pretty cool. So these people basically wake up on an unknown planet and they don't know where they are and they don't know what year it is. So they're all trying to fight over it and they're all trying to convince one another what year it is. And 
you know, every time they're arguing and things like that, they start to drift apart. And every time they go drift apart, someone is taking a person one by one. And that's the Predator. So we got to see some cool action in, in here like you would see in any any Predator thing. You know, whether it be a comic book or a movie, you know, we had to see some action in this issue number one. So it was a solid read. The art in here I did enjoy. Um, not as strong as the other two, but it still went with Predator pretty well. So up next on the list, we got Bloodline, Daughter of Blade. This is issue number two, and this is the Peach Momoko variant. Um, I'm probably going to be dropping this series, just to be quite honest with you. I'm not really digging it, and I'm not a fan of the artwork either. I tried issue number one. It wasn't the greatest. This issue was slightly better than the last, but it's nothing that I want to keep reading, and I don't want to waste my money on this comic anymore. Um, so in this issue, we see um, this character get into a fight with another girl at school and they have this whole dispute they have this whole conflict they get into this whole fight and the next day they're partnered up and they're fighting monsters together and it just doesn't really make sense to me um uh, just wasn't a whole fan of the whole idea behind it and it just kind of feels rushed with what they're trying to do making her a monster hunter like her father was blade um you know that she has a lot to live up to but it's not enough for me, I guess. Um, like I said, the art wasn't my favorite, so probably ending with this issue number two. So up next on the list, we got Batman 133, brought to you by Chip Zdarsky and Mike Hawthorne. And I will say that this issue is probably one of the weaker ones from the last couple issues. This one felt a little bit rushed. You know, usually I'm a fan of Chip Zdarsky's work and his run on Batman, and I've been enjoying it overall so since he started working on Batman. But this felt a little rushed to me. So we see Catwoman in this issue. She's interacting with Red Mask. And Red Mask is basically forcing her to work for him. And further in the book, we also realize that Red Mask is... Um, that he does have superpowers. So that was pretty interesting to learn about this character. And, you know, another thing that I was kind of confused about... You know, this whole thing about Batman being in an alternate reality and things like that. So Batman... As you can see on the cover, he's digging up the grave of Bruce Wayne. And that's exactly what happens in this issue. So he digs up the dead body of like an alternate Bruce Wayne. And he starts dragging the body away. And Ar Alfred just confronts him about it. And Batman completely ignores him. So I I don't know. I just felt like this issue was a little bit rushed. I would like a little more explanation and backstory on it. But we'll see if it gets picked back up in the next issue or two. Alright, so up next we got Spawn 339, brought to you by Carlo Barbary and Rory McConaville. Um, I picked up this cover, I think this is, nope, this is the cover B right here. And then I also picked up this pretty cool cover, um, and this is the cover A, which I think is my favorite out of the two. But this issue was, once again, another solid read, starting off with the art on this book. I really enjoyed the art, you know, the way it's drawn in here it seems practically perfect um, in a way. You know, the colors just match Spawn perfectly with the greens in his eyes and, like, the portals that he opens and the red in the cape and just everything else. I feel like it flows so nice with Spawn. And this issue was a good read as well. The story flowed nicely, and in this issue we saw, like, a new contender step up to be to come and take the throne of hell, pretty much. So Spawn has to go to a person he doesn't like that much, and he has to go and ask for their help in in hopes of like stopping this new threat or villain and it was a very solid read at the very end of the issue we see a standalone page with this new villain and he looks pretty badass so overall i really enjoyed this issue of spawn and it was definitely a solid read all right so the last book on the list here today we got batman and the joker the deadly duo this is issue number five and i picked up this variant of joker and I'm going to be quite honest, I've spent a lot of time just looking at this cover, and I can't tell if I like it or if I don't like it. Like, I feel like it's a cool idea, and I feel like it's pretty cool with the yellows and stuff, and the scratches of haha -ha in the background. But then I also look a little closer, and I look at the Joker, and it seems a little off to me. I don't know, leave it in the comments below. What do you think of this cover? Do you like it, or do you not like it? Because I'm stuck in the middle. But, moving forward, the art inside of this book has remained strong. It's dark... It's gritty, and I really love it, and it goes perfect with this because, you know, we got Batman and the Joker, and, you know, usually some people are getting tired of the Joker, 
And before the series, I was. I was tired of Joker being like every single comic book series of Batman that you read. You pick up a Batman book and the main villain's Joker. But in this issue, I really started to come around and I've really started to enjoy the Joker yet again. He's an awesome character and I just hope he doesn't get overused. But they're really making him something special in this issue. Or in this series, I should say. But overall, talking about the story, this was definitely the best issue of the series so far. We saw an awesome fight scene between Batman, Batgirl and the Joker. Um, and that was very intense. It was very awesome. And it was drawn perfectly. Um, we also see Bruce Wayne step in the middle of them and separate the fight. And you see the look on Batgirl's face where she's like, why are you stopping the fight? I want to keep going. And it was just a very cool thing to see. Um, and then they go back to Wayne Manor and Batgirl and Batman get into this giant argument. And it was just a very good dramatic issue. And it was also a very good horror issue. It was just a all around really good issue. This was definitely my read of the week. I really enjoyed this issue and I'm definitely looking forward to the next ones. I don't know if this is a limited series or an ongoing, um, and if you do know the answer to that, leave it in the comments below, because I don't actually know. All right, there you have it, everybody. Those are my new comic book day reviews. All the books that I picked up on the March 8th new comic book day. I hope you all enjoyed this video. You know, there's a lot of good comics on here. There unfortunately was one that I'm dropping, but hopefully next week we can make up for it by finding a new love for a different, for a different comic. So if you like this style of video and you want to see more of it, make sure you hit that playlist that's probably popping up right now featuring all my new comic book day reviews. And make sure you check out my latest video of Just the Keys where I show you all the keys that you need to pick up on the upcoming new comic book day. So I want to thank you all for watching, thank you all for the support, and thank you all for the comments. It really means a lot. I'm Will, the Comic Beast, and I'll catch you next time. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless, uh, a sea of the aimless, I don't want to be one of the nameless, I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it, and I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations, don't try to stop me, I exist to write my own story, I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory, yeah.